everyone, welcome back to the channel. So no. today, <laughs> and <laughs> and press my flash yeah, we're rocking and rolling. So we are back to with the A to Z. Z. <laughs> so I really caught you off. <laughs> we just did, if you haven't watched it, uh, a little update of things we got at London Film and Comic Con, and I was just tidying away my uh, prints. <laughs> and I was like, "Record, we got to get this film on." So anyway, we're back with the A to Z of horror, and the today's good evening, episode. boils and ghouls. Oh, you have to get that one in. So we're back with <laughs> T. T. So cup of tea? I wouldn't mind so one. Do you want a cup of tea? I quite like one. I do like a cup of tea. I'll text the wife, get her to make Put a kettle on. Put a kettle on, love. Put a kettle on. So we are back with Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. And this is kind of on our Toby Hooper buzz. Yeah, yeah. Buzz, yeah, buzz. Yeah, buzz. Yeah, buzz. I like that. Yeah, the buzz is back. Oh, he writes his own material. Yeah. So, yeah, we've obviously seen the original, but uh, I've not seen this. Never seen it. Do you know what? We were doing some messaging around um, after London Film and Comic Con. Grumpy Andy, who does great videos out there, um, yes, basically said was mocking you for not seeing this and was like, "I must yeah, have seen it." And I was like, "Do you know what? I've seen every so other." Seems like I'm like the nerd and you're like the guru of horror. Am I the guru? <laughs> I well, think... Randy's obviously seen. But it. Do you know what? I haven't, yeah, and I've seen every other <laughs> Chainsaw version apart from Number Two, and I don't know why I've never seen Number Two. Um, so let's watch number two. So I'm ashamed to say I've never seen it. We're gonna whack this bad boy on and let you know our thoughts afterwards. Mm. Bye. No, oh, that's a good ending. Right. To the music. <laughs> oh, no, there's a lion. MGM. Oh, I'm right, MGM. so we're back from watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, widely referred to as TCM2. Is that the uh, acronym? Yeah. TCM2. <laughs> right, so we've watched for the first time this uh, evening the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, our yes. release. I'll just say our release in case they watched the video and see that we're plugging their product. But yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, the sequel 12 years. Sequel, Lucy. I'm going to use okay. the term Lucy, but it's. Oh, we're going to hit this up right now. 12 years after the original. <laughs> right, so. It is nothing like the original, is it? No, we did know that going in. As we are saying, else, Grumpy Andrew would put us a tweet out saying, expect it to be nothing like the original. I knew it was going to be nothing like the original. Like, isn't it meant to be a comedy? So we was expecting it to be that in that sort of vein, weren't we? But, but this is... Okay, if you take the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and you said, let's make a sequel, nowhere ever is this a sequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's not the same in tone, it's not the same in continuation of story, it's not no, the same in... It, there's nothing the same apart from it happens you to have... You couldn't write a sequel more opposite if you sat down and had to write a sequel to this. It's this was like it. fan fiction made for a joke by some people that liked the original. Um, <laughs> but I say all this not so much as a criticism of this film, just to say it's a so far removed from the original. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how much how much more you could say differentiating to the first one. It's completely, like I said, different tone, nothing like it. Nothing like, like it. everything about the first one was about fear and that bit that gets Isolation, into your skin just, and yeah, the fact that it was yeah. could have happened and you don't know what's going on in places that you don't travel and you know the people that have been left out by society. This the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre still to this day scares me. It's it. It's... And this was just I just watched the the, uh, the menu screens on and the bit where Leatherface and this just like shakes with his chainsaw. Leatherface did a lot of dancing in this and not much chainsaw. Yeah. La, da, 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 yeah. da. It does a lot of dancing uh, and it gets gutted like a pig, doesn't it? Um, so how do you synopsis this film? Basically, there's a small town... You can't, town... because none of it made sense! Right. There's a small town radio, and... Think the fog. And the radio is called one night by two dickheads, and they're murdered by... <laughs> Leatherface? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and this was all heard on the radio, because this radio station cannot hang up the phone on you the caller in has to hang up yeah. the phone yeah never well, i suppose if you're still on the line he's still taking up the line you think they're on a radio station surely well, they could just turn you down and that would never work this is really bad technology but then you, and, and, and i would be willing to admit technology wasn't as good in those days but everybody in this film had a car phone <laughs> 
yeah, the like, car everybody. Angle, phone in an office where everyone's got cars. They even on. had not a radio in the car. They had to have a wireless radio. On the RV. On the yeah, 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 in, but the car had a phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's um, completely out there. So then a... Well, I, I said cop, but I think I'm I'm wrong with that statement. Dennis Hopper's... He looked like a sheriff. Dennis Hopper looked like a he sheriff. Looked like a, he looked like a, a badass marshal. sheriff. Yeah. But he uh, wasn't really, was he? No, he was kind, kind of... kind of underwhelming, I found, his character. I, I, I find to Dennis Hopper to the underwhelming in a lot of things. Yeah, we did say that. Now, he's probably linked because he's the brother of the fat guy in the wheelchair from the original. Yeah, no need to get personal. <laughs> fat guy in the wheelchair. <laughs> I've probably offended lots of people with that one. <laughs> But yeah, that's I suppose the only link. So he's he's interested in the murder because obviously he wants to seek revenge for his brother. So he's like a completely different storyline. Yeah, completely that's different going story on arc. to what's going on, and that happens in a lot of Toby Hooper films. There's like a separate storyline that doesn't link to the main film. I'm thinking Life Force. I'm thinking um, Poltergeist. Uh, you said yeah, Poltergeist. No, 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 not Poltergeist. Funhouse. Funhouse. Uh, has that whole thing about the family going on that doesn't really link... He has this way he likes to have a separate story that I comes together. I can't remember that film. I remember it being good, good film. It's good. <laughs> um, I can't remember much about it. So, uh, <laughs> uh, we're struggling with words with this one. I mean... Okay, it's a mess. It's an absolute fucking mess. Um, the, 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 the woman makes every decision that makes no sense to go to places to get her killed to want to get out of them it makes no sense the leatherface and the family that he's with make no sense the the actions of everybody make no fucking sense this film is absolutely absolutely stupid as fuck and i loved it <laughs> 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 it does when she's running when she's following him and then uh, why we were like what are you doing what is the point of this what is the point why didn't she just go but <laughs> this but reminded it, me but very it facilitated early on. it didn't it yeah it facilitated the inevitable it yeah. set a tone even in the opening music even when the oh, opening the credits you're like oh my god this is this is i said it felt like exploitation it had a yeah, weird it reminded me of, you talked about yeah. it reminded me of early like uh, peter jackson you can see lots of big name directors and lots of horror fans love this film i mean rob zombie obviously has taken lots of the yeah. uh, aesthetics from it you can see that in lots of other people's work um but it's so out of time. It's so hard to place. In, I mean, if if you were really trying to place the year, it was eighty six, wasn't it? It, it was, was eighty six. This came after Toby yeah. Hooper had made like Poltergeist. The year after Life, Life Force, Force. Yeah. and it just seems so interesting. As where was horror going? This was out and out made to cash in on the name and be an over the top gore film. And if I'm honest, both of those two elements work really well. The gore, although not scary, was fun, silly, over the top. Pretty grim in places. It was the grim with the face removal bit. Yeah. Where she, I was like, oh, that's a bit grim. But you never cared. You know, you never, you never cared. You, you didn't watch this to be scared or put into a tense place. You watched this simply to go, ha, blood. <laughs> that was basically it. You ha, ha. Oh, ah, guts. But I, uh, I had fun with it. I really did have fun with it. I was laughing out loud. Yeah, we, that, and we both laughed that out. The trapdoor scene was brilliant. Yeah, I'd, a mistake. I would say, at a certain point, probably about an hour in, I think we both started to lose a little bit of patience yep. with it. Yeah, um, there was. There was a bit of pacing issues with it, and we even said that during it, didn't we? And that was almost when they tried to take it back to being nasty. It tried to go back to like the original dinner sequence, and you kind of went, oh, this is trying to be yeah, nasty yeah. now, but, but we already don't that, care. It's like we just want to see more. The bit where she says goodbye... It's like, I love you. Uh, when he dies, he goes, oh, shit. It tried to put a bit of emotion in it, and it was just like, don't care. Yeah, they, they don't care. I want to see chainsaws. it far too long, yeah. as in, like, we're move supposed on, to care. On. We already don't care about these people. You've been making stupid decisions and get butchered in stupid ways. We don't care. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, Bill Mosley was great. Come on, his chop. Chop top. Chop top. Got a little bit, he got, he oh, that bit with the hanger where he's just like scratching his... That was good. I like that. That would be he a good Halloween really costume. Good. He Over was good. Over the top really worked well. I really, I think he's probably his standout performance in this. I did like the main the girl. Woman, yeah, Caroline Williams. She was good. Yeah, she, towards the end she got a bit... 
squealy a bit. But then that's what you expect in this. Yeah, but she was better than most people in Lee these movies. Sort of, yeah, you kind of thought she yeah. had a bit of toughness to her. And the end <sighs> scene, the end closing scene. <laughs> I said it's going to end like that, and it did. So Leatherface in this. You didn't like, did you? He didn't he's, like. He's no Gunnar Hansen, Leatherface. He's uh, he's taken quiet. that. He's now just a clown rather than the. <laughs> the the sort of simpleton you know you I get that you want a little bit of sympathy for him but did uh, you find the shaking really made him look clown like yeah he's yeah. saying just really was out of character to Leatherface in the original yeah, yeah well, everything he did everything he did. was out of place from the original this this was much more of a follow up to Bloody Funhouse or something like that well, yeah uh, but even that it was it, even not even that they were they were you know. We, we mentioned in another video, we met Toby Hooper at London Film and Comic Con, and one of the things I said to him was that Eating Alive, I think, is a punk as fuck film. And if you want to say that, you know, he's done this groundhouse, he's done these punk out there films, and then he went and did, like, mainstream stuff like Poltergeist, and yes, there's a lot of issues around that, but even Life Force is a very mainstream yeah. horror sci-fi. What the fuck is this? It was just... You mean he's just him having some fun, saying, fuck it, I'm going to do what I want. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's what he said to Canon as well, with it being a Canon movie, and yeah. I don't think they were very happy with it. But yeah, a messy, messy good time. I enjoyed I it. Had a great fun with it. I'd watch it again. I'd definitely. definitely watch it. I'd love to watch it at night with double a few head beers. Of the fun house. I, I, I think double head of this with bad taste, or yeah, you something it. like that. It, that was where it really. It's fit definitely got rewatchability. It's one of them films I can rewatch. Again. I, I reckon it'd be beers. better on repeat viewings because the bits which we were dragging you wouldn't have to pay attention to because you already know they don't want to make any difference yeah, to the yeah. plot so you Often could like drift like in now yeah. yeah good background movie i would say in the future right let's score this shit i'm going to let you start <laughs> right bearing in mind that our scoring system is three means it does what it needs to do three is a good score four is above average two below average one shit we give any five, five yet in this? i think we give lost boys a five Agree. yeah i think i'm gonna give this a three because i think it it although it didn't do what i wanted it to do what it did do it did do well if that makes sense i, yeah. I wanted it to be a very different film but when it, it was, very it? very when it, it showed its hand right at the beginning you went Fair enough, this is what it's going to be, and it was that film, and it did it well. Yeah, I agree. Well, I knew, I had an expectation that this, it would be like it was. You know, it was going to be tongue-in-cheek, in-your-face, gore horror. It wasn't as gore-fun horror. It wasn't as gory as I thought wanted it to be to be I honest. think it was gory enough but it didn't didn't yeah. resonate I don't think you realised it was being gory because you meant spent most of the time yeah. laughing at the gore rather than going oh, oh you were like ha, so if I, yeah I suppose especially the bit where he gets the never face gets the chainsaw yeah. <laughs> right cool. so is that a three from you as well yeah I'm going to go three I'd no. love to give it a bit more though but I, no I'm going to stick Three's not, bad score. three is not a bad score. Three is not a bad score. We've said, half, We've said I, three is not a bad score. Three means it does what it needs to. Three means good. Three means good. Three's That's good. I'm gonna go three and a half. Oh, oh. Throwing a cheeky half star. I, I can't. I can't because that little bit of pacing issue as it went into yeah, sort of well. the final end. And can't do it. No, I really enjoyed it. It was good. Three and a half. So that's T. T. Done. What was that for T? You. No. T. I've got uh, it's late. Right. Um you we will be back with oh. Oh. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I can't think of it. The Umbrella Man. I don't know if that exists. If oh, not, we should I've make got, it. I've, I've got one. Oh he's got one. You've got Ooh, one. He's gonna keep it as a surprise. 90s one, I think. Ooh. Don't know, but I'm rubbish at this game, so. So there we're we go. gonna go. Thanks for joining in. If you bothered, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Mm. Comments below. We'll see Messages you on Twitter, followers on Letterboxd. Boom. Nice plug. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>